Hello Scorpio, thank you for joining me for your monthly forecast for June. There's a very Scorpionic energy swirling around this month and you can tune into the good bits for sure. One of the things that's going to be happening for you is that the Sun through to the 20th makes its way through a part of your situation which is actually very reflective of your zodiac sign. It's about the potential for ends and beginnings it's also much more psychological. It can be about even secrets. It's going through the sign of Gemini, which of course is very bright and bubbly. And also Mercury, the ruler of Gemini, is in this location for the first half of this month. So your natural ability to penetrate beneath what's obvious and get beyond what people are presenting to you and to really understand what they mean is certainly going to be sharpened, or will it be? Because from the 3rd through to the 12th, the Sun is forging a really tricky right angle with Neptune. Neptune's in a beautiful location for you and has been since 2012. It's very much to do with your self-expression, your creativity, your flair, the things you love in life. But it's also uh, an influence that can, of course, be quite distorting. And in the right angle with the sun, if there are any politics around your situation, and particularly around a love relationship, they could certainly be strongly felt across this set of days. But your modern ruler of Pluto is also clashing with Venus from the 4th through to the 11th. It's possible you could have a very intense conversation across these days. And if someone does seem a little evasive or not really responding to your desire to get to the bottom of what things really mean, perhaps they're going to be the one withholding from you. Venus's opposition with Pluto can certainly r stir up a, an innate passion within you. However, it's also true that if you're single, this combination could see you articulating your interest in someone in a very uh, upfront and direct way. But also, you can come across as being quite magnetic. If you do encounter someone, they're certainly going to know that your energy is quite unique. And it's going to be something that's going to make them really sit up and take notice. In a very happy way, it's possible that this could connect you to someone who really could be good for you. But equally, you may have a conversation which is highly charged, where each side is trying to put their best spin on the situation from their own viewpoint. So do watch out for the politics that are possible at the start of this month. Fortunately, Jupiter, the planet of good fortune, does continue in your zodiac sign. Now, of course, it is going to be going retrograde until the 10th of July, but it's forging a beautiful link with Neptune, which goes on all this month. If there is something creative that you're doing and you want to liberate yourself from something that hasn't been working, the Sun's passage through the 8th house can see a strand come to a close, but Jupiter's angle with Neptune can certainly see you engineering some new possibilities. You can feel very, very uh, alive when it comes to demonstrating your talents. And it's also possible that that again, this can be very good if you are interested in someone and you want to woo them. It could be through performance, film, uh, music, that you get together and it can be very, very positive. Now by the 13th of this month, we do see some big changes because on that day, Mercury moves into the sign of Cancer, which is good for you because it's about travel, it's about expansion, it's, about, it's a freer spirit, it's not so intense and full on as its transit through Gemini. But also on the 14th, Venus uh, moves and goes to the very top of your scope into the sign of Leo. Now this is fascinating stuff because your traditional ruler Mars is actually in your home zone right through the spine of this month. And it is going to be in opposition with the North Node, the point of destiny. So whatever's going on for you, and particularly in terms of something that could come to an end, it may be around your worldly role that's altering. This could be a new job. It could be a complete change of direction. And also around relationships, there's a potential for a new way of being because, of course, Uranus, the planet of surprises, is now in your opposite sign. And that can create some excitement and possibilities for sure. 
But Venus then goes into an opposition with Mars from the 18th to the 28th. This 10-day period will need some care. If you've got different aspirations in terms of your life direction from, say, loved ones, you cannot expect them to immediately fall in with you. And yet there may be part of you that almost wants them to do it, but it is going to require some careful negotiation. So Mars being in the fourth house can make us a little defensive and a little impatient. And Venus in the tenth house is wonderful for, for cultivating new contacts and improving our relationships professionally. But it is going to be important to make sure that the core of your existence is still working well. So if someone is not necessarily getting what you want to do immediately, there may be some moments this month where you just need to count to ten. Now from the 21st to the 24th, Mercury goes into opposition with Pluto. People who have this in their natal horoscopes can be mightily opinionated. And if you ever encounter somebody who's got this, as I have, it's very hard to persuade them ever that something isn't as they think it is. So if you have a conversation across those days like that, you'll know where that's coming from. But it also could be you standing up for a principle that you strongly believe in. If you're hoping to travel across those days, go further afield, learn a new language, or apply for any kind of course which will give you professional qualifications, or perhaps a new experience, or even academic qualifications, then I think this aspect is pushing you to inform yourself, to give yourself greater knowledge, and it can be a good thing. But if you do find yourselves on opposite ends of a debate, it is going to be important not to get so caught up in it that the middle ground, that sense of consensus, does get swept away. Now, the sun's also going to be moving into Cancer on the 21st, and, of course, this is a, a water position, so the triplicity matches yours, and this can be a great time of enablement. After what has been the intense phase of the sun making its way through Gemini, it's like you're coming out into the light. So if there have been some changes, now you could want some levitation, and a change of scene is a great way to achieve that. Now, even if you're someone who's very adhered to routines and the life structures that you have, if you do do something spontaneous in the last 10 days of this month, I think it can be like a breath of fresh air. So if you have a chance to, to go off somewhere to some kind of uh, holiday or vacation, or someone invites you for the weekend, it may be something that you could really enjoy. Now, I have to be honest, with Mars going into a retrograde on the 26th, those changes that you may want to bring about at home could slow down a little bit, or there could be some miscommunication with someone close. But Mars is going to stay in this location through to the middle of November. So harnessing any impatience you may have with people immediately around you or the pace of events affecting your home life is going to continue to be an important theme, even though he will rewind into the sign of Capricorn for two weeks during that entire transit. Now, finally, there is a very, very important full moon which occurs on the 28th of this month because this is going to be uh, in the sign of Capricorn and it's going to be embracing Saturn, the planet of restriction. Saturn, of course, can make us think a little bit more sceptically about things, a little bit more cautiously, and in that sense can be a very good influence. You can be quite a cautious thinker yourself. You like to check out everything, think very carefully. You might ask loads of questions and seem very bright and bubbly, but underneath that, you can keep what you really feel very close to your chest. Maybe someone's about to ask you for your opinion, and you may find it hard not to give it in a very frank way. And that can happen for two weeks from the 28th. Also, it's worth mentioning that the new moon, which occurs on the 13th, is forging a quincunx with your modern ruler of Pluto. So when it comes to your long-term financial situation, any business interests you have, shared finances, the dialogue really needs to be thorough. And again, with Saturn on the same part of your scope, the third house, I think there are going to be times this month when you are thinking very intensely about what you believe in, what your value systems are, 
and could find yourself having to defend who you are in some ways because obviously Pluto is opposing Venus, it's also opposing Mercury, it's in the quincunx with the new moon and then Saturn also in Capricorn is going to be in opposition with the Sun in the sign of Cancer as the month draws to a close. So these oppositions from Capricornian energies means that Capricorn energy is something that you do need to stay attuned to and that's about structure, it's about self-discipline, it's about hard work but for you it's in your idea se uh, sector. So I think this month could see you pushed to learn new ideas and if you're open to this I think it can be hugely uplifting for you, give you so much more extra confidence. If you're resistant to it you could start to feel a little bit wounded but I do feel that some kind of major change can take place in the first phase of this month, the first 20 days. But it's just about being clear where you're coming from and what your responses are. And with Mars in that tender zone, just try to resist being defensive. It's been a real pleasure being with you. I'd love it if you would like or comment on this video, or if you've yet to do so, subscribe to my channel. But for now, good luck and goodbye. Hello, thank you so much for watching my video. I'd love you to join me at my Horoscope Ace app. You can find this at www.horoscope-ace.com. You can use it through Android, iOS, Apple or Facebook. Check out your Ascendant or your Moon site or download your free birth chart. There's all your favourite videos, plus there are daily, weekly, monthly and yearly horoscopes for general, love, Chinese and Indian astrology. If your passion is tarot, there's my brilliant three card money or love tarot readings too. And it's all there at www.horoscope-ace.com. Thank you.